Let's take a look at onion skin in Paint and Stick 1.5. Make a new solid and apply Paint and Stick. And I'll start with my first drawing here. Then I'll move to my next frame and I can press T to toggle on onion skin or you can just press this button right here. If you press U, that will show your keyframes down here. So here's the previous frame. I'm on it right now. And when I move to my next frame, I'm going to draw again here. And another keyframe was created. So I move to my next frame. And you'll see that you can only see one behind. Now if I go back two frames to the first frame, you can see one ahead. So let's take a look here in the onion skin menu. Past frames and future frames determine how many frames you're seeing behind and ahead on any given frame. So let me just draw a few more frames. All right, now I'm going to scroll back. And as I dial in this frame's past, notice how it's showing more frames in the past and frames future, showing more frames in the future. So I'm just going to quickly complete this animation so we can get a better look at these controls. All right, I've finished, so I'm gonna press T to turn off onion skin and play this back. So that's good enough. So now we have some frames to work with. And uh, let's take a look at some of the finer controls in onion skin. So I'm gonna go back to a frame that's kind of in the middle of all my keyframes. And now I'll press T again to toggle on onion skin. And uh, let's take a look at what some of these controls do more in depth. Let me just shut off future frames for a moment. So we're looking at the past frames. So past frames is how many frames we see behind. So if I say three frames, we'll see three behind. If I say eight, we'll see eight, 10. So pretty self-explanatory. The near frame opacity is the opacity of this first frame. So I'll set that to 100 and you'll see that uh, all of these get a little bit more opaque. I'll leave that at 75 for now. The far frame opacity is how opaque the last frame is. So at zero, you can't see it. Actually, I think that's only nine behind, so let me just set this to eight so you can uh, see that go on and off. Uh, so this would be the eighth frame behind. Setting it to zero, it's completely gone. So we'll leave that at 10. This is the tint color, what color you want the onion skin trail to be. And the tint amount, which is how much it's going to blend on that color. Maybe you still want to see a little bit of color so you can do something like that. Future frames work exactly the same way. And we have this last option, current frame, which admittedly I pretty much never use, but you can if you want to, which will tint your current frame with a color. Or affect its opacity. Now let's take a look at the uh, blend mode here. Right now it's set to mix, so see how you're seeing um, these skins overlap each other a little bit? If you set it to obscure, it's going to show them as solid frames. Now each of these have their advantages and uh, disadvantages. I personally prefer mix because it kind of lets me see uh, more of the trail here, but obscure can be useful if you have a lot going on and maybe just want to see whole frames and uh, not get confused. For a simple animation though and for most purposes, I prefer mix. Here's the order. Present in front just means that this frame, the uh, one that we're currently on, is going to show up in front of the others. And then uh, the one thing you might notice here is that whichever ones are closest in time are going to be on top, and the ones that are farthest away in time are going to be on bottom. Uh, I prefer this one. Or you could do chronological, which means it's going to show them in order of when they appear on screen, so the newest one will always be on top. So even though this is the frame we're currently drawing on, this red one here, the one in front of it is going to show up on top. And chronological present in front is the same as chronological, except it forces the one that you're currently on to be in the front. So frame step. We actually get a lot of confusion and questions about frame step. Uh, we might change the name to frame skip in the future. This is for if you're drawing on twos or threes. If you set this to two, watch what happens. Notice how it's only showing every other frame now. Well, this is useful in a situation where you really do want to be drawing on twos. So for example, uh, Right now I'm clearly drawing on ones, but let me just stretch this out to 200%. All right, and I'm going to move over to one of my frames here and see how it's skipping over every other frame. So if I just go back one, you won't see anything because it's uh, getting all these blank uh, still keyframes in here, but here it's looking at every other. So this is useful if you're working on twos. 
Also, I'm just going to press T and toggle off onion skin again. I just want to uh, take a look here. These keyframes, uh, right now, if I play this back, because I've put them on twos, we're not seeing the frame in between because these are still keyframes. To get around that, select all of your keyframes. On Windows, holds Control and Alt. On Mac, holds Command and Alt. And then click on the keyframes. And now they're going to hold until the next keyframe. Now the only issue you're going to run into here is when you get to your last keyframe, it's going to hold indefinitely until the next keyframe. So you can force in a blank keyframe here just by having paint and stick selected and uh, pressing the uh, clear keyframe button. One of the help ticket reports that we get tons of is people say that onion skin isn't working with uh, regular layers when you're not drawing with paint and stick. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very quickly use this uh, composition of a star here, and I'm going to trace over this animation. I won't make you watch this whole thing. Okay, so here it is. It's the same animation, except I'm using a composition instead of drawings. And now a lot of users are going to take this layer. Now see it has these uh, position keyframes moving along, and they're going to go to uh, paint and stick. They'll shut off paint on transparent, and they'll turn on onion skin. And then they'll look through it and they'll see uh, there are no onion skins and they'll think that this doesn't work. Well, actually, um, it is working. It is onion skinning. But the problem is uh, the way that After Effects works is that this effect is on this layer following these position keyframes. Uh, so allow me to make a quick change to kind of show what's going on. Inside of this star composition, I'm just going to put a rotation keyframe. And I'll have this rotate over the course of the sequence. So that's what it looks like. Now let's go back to our main comp, and uh, let's take a look at this up close. Uh, Alright, so here we are. You can see the onion skin. The onion skin is working. If I go down here and I turn on past and future frames and set this to say 5 for each, the onion skin is working. However, it's moving along with the layer because that's just how layers work in After Effects. So the fast and easy way around this is to uh, take your onion skin effect, just cut it, make a new adjustment layer, and paste it. So then you're going to notice that when you play this back, the onion skin still isn't working. Well, let me explain why. Uh, first, you have to hide the background. If you take a look, when you have onion skin on an adjustment layer, it's going to look at all the layers beneath it, and it's going to create skins uh, based on the transparency of all the layers beneath it. Uh, so here, when we have just the star and not the background, this onion skin on adjustment layer is working fine. It's actually great because, uh, you know, you can extend this. And you can use this to uh, work out any of the weird keyframes here. And you can get uh, real-time feedback with your onion skin. All right, I'm not going to worry too much about making that look good. Just proving the point that uh, you can use it for this purpose. So why doesn't it work when we have the background on? Well, this background here, I'll turn this down to zero opacity, turn it on, and then blend it up. You'll see what's happening is that the background is that the background is visible in the onion skin too. So the issue is, if your background is at 100%, obviously when this is composited over the top of all the onion skins, you can't see them behind the 100% opaque background. So to use onion skin on an adjustment layer, just shut off your background while you're working, and then turn it back on when you're ready to go. Thanks for watching. For more tutorials, check out aescripts.com slash paint and stick.